Hello everybody, this is Zach with Top Deck Nation coming at you today with another deck profile video. Um, as many of you might know, the new Breakpoint expansion just came out this Wednesday, so uh, February 3rd I believe. So, you know, with that uh, expansion, which is probably one of the best we've had, uh, maybe since Roaring Skies or so, so definitely the best this 2016 season, uh, you know, with that expansion there are a ton of new strategies. Um, you know, you can definitely check out my website where I review, um, you know, some of the best cards and strategies. So, you know, topdecknation.com, check that out. But, you know, today we are looking at what is, you know, perhaps one of the best strategies from uh, the new set, the best cards. And that's going to be Greninja Break. Um, you know, this, this card is really, really good. Um, it kind of redefines the idea of a competitive non ex uh, centric deck, and that's what I love about it. You know, it, it's able to kind of hold its own against those heavy hitting, uh, high HP Pokemon ex simply because it's it's got a lot of HP. Um, it's got a great ability, and the damage output is actually pretty efficient for the cost. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this deck here. Um, so you know, the main strategy we have here is to take advantage of Greninja Break. And let's let's go ahead and jump into it and see how it works here. So Greninja Break's ability, and I am sorry about the orientation here, it looks like I can't really rotate this, uh, but Greninja Break's ability is Giant Water Shuriken. Uh, so if you've played with the original Greninja back in XY, maybe with Miltank or something like that, you're probably familiar with Water Shuriken, but this one really takes it to a whole new level. Uh, it says once during your turn, if this Pokemon's active, you can actually discard a Water Energy from your hand and put six damage counters on one of your Pokemon. Like, wow. Um, you know, in a deck, in a format where a lot of bats are played, like Golbat and Crobat from uh, Phantom Forces, um, you know, this in a lot of ways is way better. You know, I, I just have to discard an energy and I can put 60 damage anywhere on the board. I mean, wow, you know, if I have two of these guys and kind of retreat out, um, I can put 120 on the board before I've even attacked. So, um, you know, I can definitely knock out shamans with, with that. I can knock out anything with uh, a lack of, uh, or a small amount of HP, I should say. So, like, Pumpkaboo or Joltik and Night March or Pikachus and, like, a Raichu deck. So, this guy is really good. And not to mention, uh, he has 170 HP, so he's up there with a lot of competitive EXs, like Lugia EX, uh, Evil Tall EX, you know, the list kind of goes on, but that kind of goes to show you this is a really good card. Now, unfortunately, you can't use Archie's Ace in the Hole to bring it out, otherwise that would be ridiculously good. And that's just because it's, you know, by itself, it's not a complete Pokemon. If you notice on here, there's no, uh, there's no attack, there's no retreat cost. Uh, weakness, anything like that. So really, you're putting that on top of another Greninja, a Stage 2 Greninja. And uh, with that, you know, we can just kind of segue into Greninja. Um, like I said, you're probably familiar with this one. It's got the Water Shuriken, uh, lets you discard energy and put three damage counters. Uh, so not as good, but um, the good thing is that you can, in fact, combine the two. So if you have uh, a Greninja with Water Shuriken and the Break on top of it, you can use both of those abilities and put 90 on something. So that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, the attack is okay. It's doing 50, but it goes through pretty much everything. Weakness, resistance, other effects. So, uh, sorry, it's not going to knock out an Entei in one hit, unfortunately, uh, because it doesn't do weakness, but it can go through any effects. So that's that's a pretty uh, pretty good attack to have, just in case. So that is the Greninja uh, from XY, but I'm also excited about the one from Breakpoint. Uh, this one is similar, you know, it's got the uh, same amount of HP, uh, the attacks just cost one energy, but, you know, both, the, both these attacks are really good. So Shadow Stitching, uh, one for 40, and it says until the end of your opponent's next turn, uh, each of your opponent's Pokemon does not have abilities. So in some ways it's kind of like a Garbodor, uh, but it's kind of one-sided, so kind of like a Hex Maniac. So that that's very situational, but if you can get Greninja out and use it against something, well, that can prevent your opponent from using things like uh, Bronzong's Metal Links, uh, Crobat, uh, I think he has Sneaky Bite. Um, you know, the list kind of goes on, even Shaman's setup ability. It's going to be preventing all of that. But what I like about this card is the second attack, Moonlight Slash. It does 60 for one, which is already pretty good, but it lets you return a Water Energy in your hand and do 20 more. So not only can I do 80 for one, but I get to put the energy back in my hand. So it's really great so your opponent can't use things like Crushing Hammer or Team Flare Grunt to get rid of the energy. 
And then, you know, just in case I want to use that next turn for like a water shuriken or giant water shuriken, you know, it gives me that option. And the last thing to note is that this Greninja actually has free retreat. So it's great if you want to uh, switch between the two breaks that way and uh, just kind of maximize your, your damage output. So this is a, you know, a great deck, like I said, a great Nani eccentric deck, but what makes it work, you know, if you notice, there are no rare candies, anything like that. Um, there's a couple cards that really make this deck work. You know, otherwise this deck wouldn't be all that great because it would take way too long to get these Frogadiers and Greninjas out. But if you look at Frogadier's attack, for one energy, it has an attack called Water Duplicates. And what this attack does is pretty awesome. Uh, it lets you search your deck for up to three Frogadier and put them directly on the bench. So you don't even need the Froakie. Now, you know, granted, you will need a Froakie to evolve into Frogadier, at least one of them, but the other three, I can just kind of search them out and pretty much have, like, a Frog army as early as turn one. So that's really good. That's what makes this deck work, in essence. Um, you know, I am still playing for Froakie because I want to start with it, um, and also because if my Frogadiers are prized, I can put Froakies out, and as I take prizes, I can go ahead and take Frogadiers out of the prizes and just, uh, you know, if start evolving those Frog Froakies. So that's that's why we play four. I think it is important if you don't play more than two or three. I don't think that's good because you run the risk of starting with something else. Um, at that point, you've only you're only running five, six, seven Pokemon. And at that point, you know, your opponent's probably going to be drawing more cards. You're probably going to mulligan a couple times. So I, I would rather play four Froakie and just play it safe. So the great thing is that since we are playing a bunch of Stage 2s here, we can take advantage of Miltank, which has that powerful Friends attack. It says if you have any Stage 2 Pokemon, it does 70 more damage. So 1 for 80, very efficient attack. Um, you know, you don't have to really attack with Miltank a lot. I actually prefer attacking with Greninja Break, just because I can take advantage of the 60 uh, damage from Giant Water Shuriken. But this is an alternative. If, you know, if I have some Greninjas on the bench that are just kind of waiting to be built up, uh, Miltank is a great attacker just to kind of uh, stall, or, stall or delay your opponent there. Um, and lastly, uh, as far as draw support goes, I love having a 2-2 Octillery line in here. It's so great. You know, once you get that Octillery out, it's almost like, uh, kind of like a pseudo Shaman, if you will, drawing up to five every turn. I mean, that is really good. It just sits on the bench. You know, if your opponent wants to Lysander it up or do whatever, I mean, that's fine. You know, I can just continue to use Greninja's abilities. Um, I can always retreat out with Floatstone. If it's knocked out, that's fine also because you didn't really hit my Greninja's. Um, and we also play one Shaman as well because Shaman is, uh, you know, kind of a staple in most decks. You know, in this deck, not as much. You don't have to play it, but I found that early game getting that set up for five or six cards um, can kind of get you exactly what you need. It gives you that little push forward to kind of get your strategy going. So that is why I'm playing one Shaman, but you can certainly take it out. You know, it does pretty well without the Shaman as well. So if you're looking for more of a budget centric deck, because, you know, at the time of this video, Shamans are, you know, almost 25 to 30 bucks. So I, I certainly understand that it's kind of expensive. So um, I play one, but you don't necessarily have to, but I do find it runs better. Okay, so for our supporters here, um, you know, we've got our standard four Sycamore, uh, Professor Sycamore, definitely the best supporter in the format. Discard your hand, draw seven. Um, you know, no disputes about that. It's pretty good. Pretty darn good. Um, but what I like to play in here is three Wally. Um, you know, Wally doesn't see a whole lot of play, but in this deck, it's really good. It lets me search for a deck, uh, I'm sorry, search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon. So that's pretty good. For example, if I start with a Froakie, I can immediately Wally my first turn, get the Frogadier, and go ahead and use Water Duplicates and fill my bench up with that Frog Army, that Frogadier Army. So that's why it's really good. We want to go ahead and try to get that, that out turn one as consistently as possible. Um, I'm running one Fisherman as well. That lets me get four basic energy back to my hand. That's great to kind of stack with... Uh, the shurikens, you know, the water shuriken, the giant water shuriken, it's great to just be able to attack with, have some extra energy, so that's good. Um, I play one Judds just because we need something to, to uh, disrupt our opponent's hand. Um, some people opt to play Ace Trainer in here, but I don't really like it. You know, it's very situational. Um, eventually, you'll find yourself kind of up in prizes, and at that point, it's not really helping you. It's kind of a dead card, so... Um, you know, the prize exchange is great with this deck. They might take a knockout or two on you, but then you start taking a couple knockouts on them just because uh, 
those Pokemon EX do give two prizes. So I like Judge in here because it is uh, a disruption card. Um, even though it knocks us down to four, we have Octillery, and that Abyssal Hand ability will let us draw until we have five anyway. So it's going to let us draw more cards regardless. Um, we play in one Lysander. We don't really need more than one. Because if you think about it, you know, I'm placing damage wherever I want. So it's great if I want to stall something. It's great if I want to bring something up to kind of finish it off, maybe like Shaman. But otherwise, you know, we don't have to have it. And then the last supporter is Xerosic. Uh, you know, Garbodor was reprinted. Um, somewhat reprinted, I should say. It's got the same ability but a different attack in uh, Breakpoint. So because of that, we need to play a Zero Sick just in case we go against the Garbodor deck. Uh, we can easily get that Zero Sick out, knock off the Float Stone, and then just kind of go to town with Octillery, uh, Greninja, definitely speed through the deck that way, but it is necessary now. Um, you can play Megaphone, but instead of having to you know run the risk of not drawing into it or discarding it early on, I think Zero Sick is pretty much good, pretty much good enough. Um, so that's pretty much the supporters. I think this is pretty optimal. Um, I've been testing it pretty uh, often, and I think this is a pretty good supporter count here. Um, as far as items go, um, the great thing is that we play, let's see, we play 18 water Pokemon. So 18 out of the 20 Pokemon in our deck, so that's 90% of our Pokemon, are water Pokemon. So because of that, we can actually take advantage of Dive Ball, search your deck for a water Pokemon and reveal it and put it in your hand. So that's going to help you get out the Frogadiers really quickie, quickly, the Greninjas, the Octillaries, that's really going to help you get set up. But we do play a couple Pokemon that aren't searchable by that. And we also don't want really clunky hands when we want to use Octillery. So that's why we still play 3 Ultra Ball. Um, I have seen people play 4 Dive Ball, 2 Ultra. That's pretty good. But I do like to play that 3rd Ultra Ball because, uh, you know, it helps uh, increase the chances of getting that Shaman out turn 1. It helps you thin your hand out whenever possible to use Octillery. So that's why I think it's a, a better option, if you will. We're also playing Battle Compressors just to get water in the discard, get those one-up supporters in the discard. Um, and especially, uh, you know, Battle Compressor is really important to get that Wally combo. Um, so I can Battle Compressor to get the Verse Seeker, to get the Wally, to go ahead and get the Frogadier turn one. So it's really important that we do that. It really uh, helps make the deck work. We play two Energy Retrieval. Um, you know, some people opt to kind of split the Fisherman and Energy Retrieval a different way, maybe two Fisherman, one Energy Retrieval, but I found that, uh, you know, one Fisherman's enough, chances are you won't prize it, and Energy Retrieval is great because it lets me, uh, you know, kind of have most of the benefits of Fisherman without having to waste the supporter quite yet. So, uh, we play Sacred Ash just to get our Pokemon back. Um, you know, we play a lot of Pokemon on this deck, so we want to get as many back as possible. We play Town Map. I do recommend this card a lot in this deck. Uh, you know, in many decks, Town Map is kind of useless. It doesn't really serve a purpose. It's not that great compared to other slots you can fill. But in this deck, Town Map is awesome because if you prize any Frogadiers, you know, you're already in some trouble. So if I can take a knockout or two, get those Frogadiers back to evolve, uh, evolve my Frokies, that's definitely going to be good. And since we play a few one-of cards like, you know, Fisherman and Sacred Ash, that's another reason to play Town Map in here. And then we play Trainer's Mill just because... Um, you know, we don't have a ton of supporters. We do have a Shaman and Octillery, but Trainer's Mill lets me kind of dive through the deck and, uh, you know, take out whatever Trainer card I need so I can draw four and take a Trainer. So, you know, first turn, I can Trainer's Mill, get the Wally if I need to. So just kind of depends what you draw into, but I think it's really good to have. And then lastly, we play two Floatstone just because if they Lysander Mill Tank, Lysander Octillery, and we're not really set up, uh, we're going to be in some trouble. So we need to retreat out somehow. And then, you know, as far as energy count goes, we are going to play 8 water energy. You know, originally I kind of tested it with splash energy, but the fact that I can't attach the splash energy to Shaman or Miltank, and the fact that it doesn't really work with giant water shuriken, kind of turned me off from using that. So I think 8 water is pretty good. Um, I've seen it, some people play 7, some people play 9, but I think 8 is pretty good. I haven't really had any issues drawing into the water energy. So, uh, overall, I love this deck. Um, as you'll see in the video ahead, you know, it takes, um, you know, it's really quickly to set up and more importantly, it wins the prize exchange in a ton of matchups. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into a game that I recently played on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online and let's go ahead and check out how competitive this deck is. Alright guys, looks like we are in a match here. Looks like we're going against uh, Ash Ketchum and looks like he's just kind of flipping the coin here. We're going to see who goes first. 
So let's see, looks like uh, we lost the coin flip, so he's probably going to opt to go first. Always important to go first just to get set up and everything, get your energy on the board. So we're going to go ahead and start it off. Uh, oh no, looks like we mulligan, so our opponent's going to get an extra card. But looking at his hand, I see uh, Psychic Energy, Mega Turbo, so this is probably going to be like a Mega, uh, Mega Mewtwo deck. I can't really think of any other Psychic Pokemon that would take advantage of both of those, so... Uh, we go ahead and draw our new hand, and we'll be able to start with Froki, so that's good. And uh, we have an Energy and a Wally in our hand, so that's really ideal, actually. That's going to let us be able to uh, hopefully get that Frogadier out and get that kind of uh, uh, the Water Duplicates attack off and get that Frog Army. Uh, assuming he doesn't, uh, you know, use Judge on us or something like that, you know, we should be okay. So he's going to go ahead and Acrobike. He discards a Mewtwo. Um, Looks like he'll go ahead and put that Mewtwo Spirit Link on, so he's really uh, preparing to get that Mewtwo out. He's got Shrine of Memories, so we'll have to watch out for that, because that means he'll be able to use that Damage Change attack. Um, and basically, that just means if you can't do 210 damage to knock it out, well, he's going to swap that damage and more than likely knock out something of yours. So that is certainly something to keep in mind. And he will go ahead and set up for five cards. So our opponent is getting a really strong start here. And just kind of looking at this, if you you know didn't know what was going on, I mean, you would think Froki is uh, you know about to die the next turn. You would think there's no way that this deck can possibly take on this Mega Mewtwo deck. You know, I'd have to do a whopping amount of damage just to knock it out. And let's go ahead and see what I get. So I get an Ultra Ball, so that's pretty good. Um, I can possibly get a Shaman to draw more cards to make sure we uh, get a decent start. But I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball the two supporters in my hand. I don't really need them since I've got VS Seeker. There's always the option to get them back. So I'm just kind of seeing what's in here. It looks like all four of my Frogadiers are in here. So that's uh, what I want to see my first turn, ideally. Um, I'm just seeing what else is in here. Miltank is in there. The Shaman is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Shaman. And that's really just for kind of like an insurance. You know, I like being able to get the Frogadiers out, but I need uh, to draw a bunch of cards. So let's go ahead and Wally into Frogadier. And I'll go ahead and put down Shaman and set up for four cards, hopefully getting like a supporter or something like that. Um, so go ahead and Shaman for four. And yeah, I get a pretty decent little setup here. I get uh, a Greninja, which I can definitely use next turn now. Um, I've got another Froakie, but I don't necessarily need it in this game, at least not right now. So I'm going to go ahead and Trainer's Mel just see what I get. Um, I get a lot of good stuff, actually. I get a uh, Battle Compressor, a Dive Ball. So I'm just trying to figure out what would be the best card to take here. You know, Dive Ball would certainly help because I can search out the uh, Remoraid. And that way, um, you know, hopefully get Octillery out pretty quickly. But there's also the option of using Battle Compressor to get something like a Sycamore, Professor Sycamore. Um, so I, I think I'm going to opt to get the Battle Compressor. I need to keep drawing more cards. If I don't, then I run the risk of uh, making the deck kind of uh, stagnant, I guess you would say. Like it would, you know, pretty much just not be able to kind of move on and move forward. So I want to go ahead and Battle Compress... Uh, couple more one of supporters as well as uh, Professor Sycamore. I don't really see anything else I need to battle compress honestly so that that should be fine. Alright and now I can go ahead and Ultra Ball Froakie and the Water Energy and um, as you can see this deck is already taking off but again as like insurance I'm probably gonna go ahead and get Remoraid out that's gonna keep letting me draw more cards throughout the game. So at this point I'm gonna go ahead and use Water Duplicates that will let me uh, get my Frog Army out here my little uh, Frog Brigade so I've got four Frogadiers out on my first turn, and that is ridiculous. You know, four stage ones. And I've also got Remoraid, um, and I was able to use Setup. So this is a pretty ideal start. Uh, you know, I can't promise this is how it's going to be every game. This is a great start, though. But it's, you know, in my testing, this deck list and this deck in general has been very consistent, very fast. And that's, that's what I uh, really love about this. So... Um, you know, kudos to the card developers for actually listening and making a uh, pretty competitive non-EX deck. I really like that. So we're going to see a scatter shot, and that's going to knock out the Remoraid. So now um, I think I'm going to have to promote this Frogadier. I can go ahead and evolve it also. So let's see what we can do here. Let's go ahead and evolve to Greninja. And I'm actually going to opt to put the Floatstone on that Greninja, just in case I need to retreat out into like another Greninja, the one that actually hits for 80 damage. So I'm going to go ahead and Sycamore. 
uh, that battle compressor certainly paid off, so I'm going to go ahead and Professor Sycamore, and wow, we get a really good hand. I'm going to go ahead and town map, and just to see what my prizes are, so thankfully nothing uh, really important is in that uh, those prizes. Uh, you know, I'm glad that no Frogadiers were in there, no uh, Sacred Ash, anything like that, so we should be pretty good, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive ball to get Greninja, so... You know, this is pretty crazy. This is our second turn of the game, and we already have three Greninjas out after this dive ball. So this is uh, this is just kind of a testament to how well this deck runs. It's really fast, really easy to get set up, and uh, yeah, it's a great deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another Greninja out. So at this point, we have one of the uh, two of the Water Shurikens, and then one of the uh, the ones that I prefer to attack with. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and use Mist Slash because, um, you know, I, I don't really see another option here. So I might as well just do that. Put a little bit of pressure on him. Uh, you know, potentially we could knock this Mewtwo out next turn. It just kind of depends what he uh, what he has. So he's going to opt to put another uh, energy. He's got four energy on that Mewtwo, and that is ridiculous. That is a powerful Mewtwo. Um, he's going to opt to use Sycamore, uh, Professor Sycamore. Um, so the question is, can he get a Mega Mewtwo? And that's going to be the uh, the big question here. You know, can he get it out and start taking some prizes or doing a lot of damage? Um, I see he's got another Mewtwo, another Scattershot Mewtwo. So that's that's pretty good. He can definitely build that one up as well. But what is he going to use here? Is he going to use Scattershot? Um, you know, he can certainly. Uh, I guess he could use Damage Spot, but that's really not doing much. It's just putting 50 on the board. So. Um, you know, it might be better in his case to put the 60. So he uses Shattershot, um, and he puts 60 on the board. So that's that's pretty respectable. It's pretty good. Um, so let's see what our options are at this point. I definitely want to put out the break. So I'm going to go ahead and evolve. I'm actually going to evolve the other one because uh, I don't want any damage on the Greninja break. So I'll probably go ahead and evolve this other Greninja on the bench. So it has 170 HP, so definitely in the range of most Pokemon EX, except it only gives up one prize. And at this point, I'm just kind of thinking to myself, you know, should I retreat out so I can uh, Giant Shuriken? What should I do exactly? And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put 60 damage on the board on that um, U2. And if I get another Water Energy, I can hit for 80 damage at the other attack, so that's really good. Um, and that's, that's pretty important here to keep taking those knockouts as quick as possible, pressuring uh, your opponent. So I will Sacred Ash a couple of uh, Pokemon back in, including Remoraid. Let's go ahead and Professor Sycamore, and there we go. We get an Energy Retrieval. Um, that is why I play a couple in this deck. It's awesome to draw into it really quickly and to just be able to put, the, uh, put those Water Energies back in your hand. So I get another Greninja Break, so this is huge. And uh, this is definitely going to help me out here. So I'm going to go ahead and Energy Retrieval. And I will be able to go ahead and just kind of finish something off here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach to the Greninja Break. Like I said, I'm doing 80 damage for one energy, so I can already knock something out. So, you know, at this point, yeah, I can go ahead and Water Shuriken something. Um, I didn't realize that I, I guess I had the breakout. I could have Giant Water Shuriken instead. So looking back, that might have been a better play. But um, yeah, we're still in fine shape. You know, we're doing a lot of damage. We're going to be taking a knockout this turn. So I'm going to Ultra Ball. I'm going to get Remoraid just for insurance, like I said. Um, you know, I want to be able to draw more cards just in case I get judged or red carded or something like that. I don't want to get stuck, in other words. So I'm going to do 80 damage for one energy. I love that attack just because it can kind of recycle the energy. And then at this point, I think the best bet would probably be to take a water energy and maybe something like a Verse Seeker, just in case I need a Fisherman or something like that. So I take two prizes. We're up a prize. You know, he was able to knock out the Rimmerade early on, but now he is facing a lot of pressure here. So just kind of depends what, what happens exactly. And so at this point, oh my gosh, we get red carded, so we're going to get four cards, but we do get a Professor Sycamore, we do get a VS Seeker to get back uh, practically any of our supporters, so Zero Sick, uh, Fisherman, so I, um, that might be an option to get Fisherman out next turn, it's hard to say for sure, but we're just kind of looking here. OK, 
okay, we're just kind of looking to see what our opponent's going to do. You know, will that Mega Mewtwo come out this turn? That is the uh, the big question here. If Mega Mewtwo comes out, we could be in some trouble. Um, you know, I, I'm definitely afraid of that damage swap. Um, you know, I've definitely fell uh, fallen victim to that before, not really noticing how much damage I put on it, and then, you know, they just kind of Lysander something weak up and swap it for the knockout. So, all right, we do have some options here. I am just kind of looking to see what would be the best option. Um, you know, looking back here, I think I did make a small misplay. Um, I think I could have knocked out the, uh, the Mega Mewtwo in one blow right here. But, um, yeah, it looks like we have three waters to work with. So, yeah, you know, maybe ideally uh, the, the better play here would have been to use two shurikens and then just kind of knock out with the, uh, the second attack. I think it's Midnight Rush. So a bit of a misplay on my part, but that's fine. Uh, we're still certainly ahead here. Um, yeah, and I, I think we'll be we'll be fine here. But okay, we'll go ahead and use Miss Slash. We're gonna do fifty. So like I said, we uh, we will be a little bit short of knocking him out. And actually, I don't think we even want to attack here simply because if I do and he uses Damage Swap then not only does he heal 200 damage, but he knocks me out as well. So this is one of those cases where I think I'm just going to end my turn. So, um, you know, I, I do wish I would have maybe held on to a water energy or something, but this is still uh, really great for us. We're in a great board position. Um, like I said, he's going to use damage swap and heal 150 damage. That's, you know, perfectly fine. Um, we won't get knocked out. So hopefully in the next turn we can uh, kind of come back from this and uh, you know hopefully win pretty soon so there goes the damage swap he will heal 150 damage which is crazy but thankfully we didn't get knocked out um, I'm gonna go ahead and trainers mail for the energy retrieval and at this point you know we have to do a ton of damage to this Mewtwo to actually knock it out that is uh, we have to do 210 damage so in other words uh, we have to get two of our giant water shurikens off, a normal water shuriken, and then we have to do damage. So that's going to be crazy, but uh, we've thinned our deck down, so I think we'll be able to do it. We do have Professor Sycamore. So let's go ahead and giant water shuriken one. Um, at this point, should I retreat? Should I do something else? It's very hard to say. I think the best option might be to retreat out, but it's hard to say. Um, I'm just kind of thinking about what my options are. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to opt to retreat because if I retreat, I can go ahead and pull off another shuriken. And at that point, I just need, uh, you know, a couple more waters to knock out this Mewtwo. And I think I'll be able to get those off of seven cards. So let's go ahead and draw into that. And I do get a dive ball just in case I want to get artillery out. But I do get a couple water energy, and that's going to kind of make this match right here. I'm going to knock out Mewtwo and put a lot of pressure on my opponent. So I'm going to go ahead and Water Shuriken onto that Mewtwo, attach to Greninja Break, and go ahead and pull off that attack. So that's going to be awesome. But before I do that, I'm going to Dive Ball, like I said, for some insurance to get me an extra card. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty important to go ahead and get that Octillery out. I think it's a great card. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, being able to draw every card, draw cards every turn is always a great, uh, great thing to do. But at this point... I'm in great shape, so I'm going to go ahead and Moonlight Slash, and I'll probably return the energy in my hand just in case, um, just in case I want to use like a giant Water Shark and hit something on the bench. You know, if he uses Red Card again or Judge, that's fine. I've got Octillery, I've got plenty of VS Seekers, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll take two prizes. I want to get the Float Zone in case Shaman or Octillery are brought up, and also another Water Energy. So at this point, he's in a lot of trouble. If he can't get another Mewtwo out, he is. Uh, probably going to lose and oh wow he gives up he uh he concedes the game here he realizes that you know the water shuriken is just really strong so oh my gosh that was a great game um as you can see the prize exchange was heavily in my favor there um you know even if he puts a ton of energy on Mewtwo and knocks out a Greninja um it's still a liability on his part because I've got two or three other Greninja on top of Miltank so you know Greninja break is such a great card um, I am glad that they printed it. I think it's uh, a very healthy card for the format. I think it's going to encourage people to play uh, a bunch of non-EX cards. It's really making the format diverse. So, again, kudos to the Pokemon Company for doing that. That's awesome. I hope they continue to do that. Um, 
but yeah, you know, the deck is fantastic. It's got a lot of options, and again, I like that it's a very non-EX centric deck. You don't even have to play Shaman if you don't want to, but uh, in this match, you can see that Shaman kind of gave us the push we needed to get the start. Uh, that was ideal. So, um, yeah, if there's any other decks you guys want to see me play, leave them in the comments. I'll definitely look at them. I'll definitely reply to your comments. Be sure to subscribe below. Um, check out our website, topdecknation.com. Uh, we are uh, in the process of getting, making some changes to the website, but we are going to have a nice card database, so if you want to see some high-res scans of the new set and other sets, check it out. Uh, we have articles on there, set reviews, videos, and yeah, so uh, thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. I'll have more videos uh, to come, but this has been Zach with Top Deck Nation, and I will catch you guys in the next one.